coming up, a brilliant backyard balancing act. A foolproof way to catch funky looking fish. A cunning trick for threading thick cotton through a tiny needle. And a cool way to cram a large coin through a small hole. But first, uh, Donna, Donna, what are you doing? I'm practicing. One day I might just be good enough to join Jordan's Backyard All-Stars Band. One and a two and a three. We'd love to have our own rock band. Me on guitar, Grace on keyboards, and Patrick going wild on drums. <laughs> oh, it's no good. Come on, guys. We've got to do something about having no instruments. We're going to make some that make real music. Right, the most important instrument in the band, a guitar. I've got a cardboard tube, tissue box, rubber bands. How does that make a guitar, you may ask? All I have to do is make a small hole in this side of the box, then stick the cardboard tube in here and tape it up. See, it's already looking like a guitar. OK, so now I need my strings. Just pull those around the box. Not too tight, guys. And check it out. One rock and roll guitar. Now we can think about keyboards. Grace, get those fingers limbered up. Abdul and I are expert fishermen. But we just haven't been lucky today. Wait, I think I got one. Oh, no. It was just a piece of weed. I don't know why we can't catch anything today. Maybe we're using the wrong bait. Hey, I know another type of fishing. That would be a lot more fun. Come on, let's head back to shore and I'll show you my plan. We're home in record time. Let's go. I got the shiny cardboard here. We'll each take a piece and draw a fish shape on it. The silver side of the card will make our fish easier to see underwater. Now carefully cut out the shape. Hey, nice fish shape, Abdul. Then we slip our bulldog clip over their mouths. We'll make our fish heavy enough to sink to the bottom. Now here's my new fishing bait. We're gonna try out at sea. It's a magnet. We tie our magnet onto the end of our fishing line. Let's test them. Yes! The fish can't resist our magnetic bait. Let's go back out there. Hey, Abdul. You know how the magnet bait works on dry land? Do you think it will still work underwater? I don't know if magnetism does work through water. We'll just have to try. In go the fish. Okay, first to catch a very rare and delicious magnet fish is the winner. Come on, fishies. Come to my yummy magnet. Yay, I've got one. Abdul caught one too. Well done, boys. Yep, magnetism is a force that works through water. In fact, not much gets in its way at all. Magnetic forces can even pass right through solid objects, like the Earth itself, which behaves like one big magnet surrounded by its own gigantic magnetic field. There's just one problem with these magnetic fish. They're not gonna be very tasty. Nothing wrong with cardboard fish, I say. There wasn't much wrong with Jordan's cardboard guitar either. And I can't wait to see what Grace is going to come up with for her killer keyboard instrument. We've already made a guitar. Now Grace has a cool idea about how we can make a keyboard instrument. OK, she's lining up glasses and tipping water in. Ah, all at different levels. Interesting. I see. Go, maestro. Cool, eh? The water level makes the glass sound different every time the spoon hits it. Now stand by for some ear-splitting drums. <laughs> I 
like sewing my own clothes. But I don't like having to thread the needle. Sometimes it just takes me so long to get it through. Hey! Here we go, John to the rescue. Oh, talk about beginner's luck. Thanks. Jordan thinks he's so smart. But I know a trick that'll show he can't do everything. Oh, Jordan. Can you help me for a minute? I want you to thread the needle for me. But I want you to thread it with one eye closed. It's not so easy now, is it, Jordan? We can see even small objects quite well using one eye. But we need both eyes to help us judge what is close and what is far away. Because our eyes are spread apart, they can judge distances much better when they get a fix on an object from two angles. This is called depth perception. And two eyes are definitely better than one. Looks like Jordan has met his match. <laughs> oh, man. I can't even thread a needle with both eyes open. <laughs> well, you'd better look at Emily's next little trick. That's what I call a real eye opener. Ah, it's Kimberly. And there's the lunch money she owes me. Thanks, I needed that. My money jar's getting very low. Uh-oh. There's a hole in my pocket. And the money's gone straight through. <laughs> you think it's funny, do you? Come on then, smarty pants. I've got a little game for you. I'll give you back all the money you just gave me if you can pass it through another type of hole. OK, I'm going to trace around this small coin to make a circle. Now, I fold the circle in half and carefully cut it out with the scissors. There. What we end up with is a hole smaller than this large coin. My challenge for Kimberly is to pass one of the large coins through the much smaller hole. She'll never get it through like that. Hey, no tearing the paper. Don't you believe I can do it? Watch and learn, Kimberly. Fold the paper in half like this and place the coin in the fold. Then carefully bend open the hole while it's folded in half. There. Easy. I guess I'll be keeping the cash. A coin trick like this is a great example of the science of changing shapes and surfaces. By folding one shape, it can be made to stretch around a bigger shape, even though neither object actually changes size. Thanks to sheer cleverness, my money jar gets a top up after all. Look at Lara, Lady of the Manor, and I'm a slave for the day. Hey, I just thought of something that might let me escape from this slavery. OK, Lara, how about taking a glass, a cork, a toothpick and two forks and balance them all on this glass with only the toothpick touching the glass? Wrong! All three things have to balance. It's still wrong. They must all balance, but only the toothpick touches the glass. Let the master show you how it's done. First, you stick the toothpick into one end of the cork. See? Now stick one of the forks into the side of the cork and a second fork into the cork at right angles to the first fork. There, see? Forks at right angles to each other. Now I'll try balancing it on my finger and lowering it onto the rim of the glass. Yay! There we are. Victory is so sweet. Zach's trick is all about the centre of gravity. All objects have a centre of gravity. It's the point at which the downward forces of gravity are balanced at one point, 
in a sideways direction. The center of gravity doesn't have to be located on the object, but can be somewhere around the object, just as it is at the point where the toothpick touches the rim of the glass. Now it's my turn to be Lord of the Manor. Make it snappy, please, slave. Now that was a challenge worth winning. Uh, music to my ears. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was disgusting. I think it's time we went back to some real music. Every band needs some rhythm. And Patrick is a master of improvisation. He's going to need a whole drum kit. And those kitchen containers are making all the right noises. Excellent. We're almost ready for our first live gig. Come on, guys. Great. Our audience is here. Just a little tune-up. And the Backyard All-Stars are about to hit the big time. All of the instruments work because of the way sound vibrates through different objects. Plucking the rubber guitar strings causes them to vibrate. The vibrations then bounce around inside the box in the neck, making a guitar sound. And each time Grace taps a glass, it vibrates at a rate depending on the water level. The higher the water level, the less glass there is to vibrate, so the higher the musical note. Patrick's drums also vibrate when he taps them, but the larger area on top of the drum vibrates at a slower rate. That makes a deeper sound. All the different sounds combine to make a band. Go, you Backyard All-Stars! Hmm, not bad. Maybe just a bit more practice before we hit the big time. Till then, rock on! I really wish I could join the Backyard All-Stars. Although it wasn't very nice of their audience to disappear like that. That's true, Dana. But our audience is about to disappear too because we've come to the end of another show. See, See you, you next time. time.